What's up guys? Welcome to Valdora Sensei. For today's video we will review the volume 11 chapter 1 of that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Without further ado, let's proceed with the video. The whole capital of each region was made up of its own resources and labor. I felt that the best approach to address the wealth gap was to reduce expenses, calculate the gains, and share them. Subsidizing local regions, on the other hand, has to be done with caution. If we didn't manage the situation properly, it would turn into a breeding ground for complaints. We were supposed to perform appropriately now that our country was the major faction in the council. While groups opposing to us were now being restrained, it was only a matter of time until they resurfaced. Then there was the issue of deciding who should go to the council. This person needs to be socially proficient as well as charismatic. However, when confrontations erupted, they needed to be threatening enough to prevent others from retaliating. First and foremost, I'd want to express my regret for having to decline this assignment, I stated. The early bird, after all, gets the worm. Even though I didn't consider myself devious very often, I didn't want to take charge of this shambles. Benamaru decided to follow in my footsteps. Neither do I. The most recent encounter made me understand that my personality is not suited to interrogating others. I won't be much use when I'm not in the battlefield demonstrating my martial ability. While he seemed overly humble, what he stated was most likely real. Those sneaky aristocrats would certainly be too much for Benamaru to manage. Sawe, on the other hand, turned down the position. It is my responsibility to get information. I'm afraid I can't forsake my position as Ramuru eyes Samas and ears right now. That was something I had previously assumed. I also didn't want to send Sawe. Money isn't an option. He had high values and was a very trustworthy man, but the present task he was doing was more vital. He had no spare time on his hectic schedule due to the enormous amount of building tasks he had lined up. I felt Geld would be ideal for dealing with the counselors, but I had to strike him off the list of possible candidates right now. So, in that scenario, will you be sending me? Gabble, who was attending the meeting with a serious expression on his face, was the source of the query at the time. He's fairly self-aware, therefore he's unlikely to decline such a significant part. No, I should say that I was uneasy, but I couldn't think of anyone else who would be a good fit. I've already appointed Hakuru as our military advisor and requested that he train our troops. While having Shuna as our counselor was a viable option, it would almost certainly have a detrimental influence on the country's general affairs. I couldn't send Rigard and the other goblin leaders because of the same logic. As a young country, we had to write our own laws and negotiate with foreign nations. Other issues arose, such as how to manage an ever-increasing population. The chiefs would take care of these issues first, but without Shuna and Rigard's help, everything would have to be put on weight. Even though they were the ones who were responsible for raising the next generation, there was always potential for growth and progress. I, I want to tame the kidnapped wyverns so that we might utilize them as mounts to augment our air force. This training would necessitate a massive consumption of various potions, therefore I'd like to keep gathering data. That's correct. The right person for the job, as they say, and I thought Gabble's skills were a wonderful fit for what he had advised. I'd rather have him focus on producing wyvern forces than forcing him to attend the council. All well, then. You should continue to address the situation, Gabble. With a sigh of relief, he walked away. Sir, yes. Understood. It's pointless to force duties down other people's throats, which is why I believe this was the best option. Nonetheless, our domain's expansion was much too rapid. It wasn't a good idea to broaden our horizons before honing our skills, but the amount of jobs we had to deal with was growing at an unstoppable rate. It was quite disturbing. I suppose there's nothing that can be done about it. Let's attempt to come up with some additional options. Just as I was getting started on a new idea, Xian was looking at me with dazzling eyes. Ramuru sama I'd want to. No. Xian was quickly cut off. She was most likely attempting to throw her hat into the ring, but Xian was not up for debate. Why? I'm the one who's taken aback by your reaction. Let's imagine a situation. 
Let's pretend you're a counselor, for the sake of argument. In front of you is a lustful elderly man with a large belly. He's also a counselor. Then, as if he were a dear friend, the old guy softly rests his hand on your shoulder. How are you going to respond now? It's self-evident. With my left hand, I grip that man's neck, yank him up, and strike him without hesitation. I'm going to strike him. I've got to smash him, isn't the solution. Xian was therefore out of the question. Despite the fact that Xian's development was undeniable, there were still aspects about her that I couldn't accept. As an example, consider what occurred only a few days ago. Xian was waiting for me as I entered the restaurant, her face lit up with a wide smile that spanned her entire face. She then handed out the dish she was holding. Ramuru sama I've been anticipating your arrival. I also prepared a cake with my own hands for the first time. Please give it a go. It tastes precisely the same as Shuna Sama's, but the amounts are much greater. Please eat to your heart's content. That was a nasty sensation I was having at the time. Sean, on the other hand, had mastered the art of brewing a delectable cup of black tea. As a result of that awareness, I relaxed my guard. Oh oh. Thank you very much. Then let's give it a go. I accepted it without hesitation after stating that. It was a blunder. A large slice of what seemed to be konjac was on the plate. I abruptly grew solemn. What kind of cake is this? I looked about for assistance after staring at that thing. There was no one there. Is it true that they've all fled? Gabichi, on the other hand, was sleeping in the kitchen. He was unquestionably a victim. I knew I had arrived at the most inopportune moment, but it was too late. Is this a cake? Oi, is this a cake? Yes. The flavor was faithfully replicated. Is the flavor perfect? Isn't that implying that everything else is bad? Sean exuded self-assurance. And staring at that happy expression simply made me feel more uneasy. I chose to take a taste while lamenting my own folly. I scooped up a spoonful and popped it into my lips. About the findings, I didn't have to say much more. I was afraid I was going to puke. Konjac was the texture. However, the flavor was that of a sweet cake. It was gray in color, and it felt like I was chewing on konjac, just how it looked. It was at that point that I discovered how crucial visual information was when it came to baking a cake. No, it wasn't only a cake-related issue. When it came to cooking, look was equally important for satisfaction. Even if the components are presented as is, they do not appear to be particularly tasty. How are you doing? Isn't it delicious? I was irritated by Xian's pleased expression, as if she wanted to proclaim, it's wonderful, right? Xian had no idea what he was doing from the start. She had made no progress on the very first step, what is cooking, on this fundamental stage. Please have a seat. Take a seat for a moment. I had to chastise you a little. Huh. Why can't it be? Xian went from haughty to teary-eyed in the blink of an eye. She was taken aback and unsure what to do, but I was unconcerned and began scolding her. For around 30 minutes, and without fail. I explained to Xian what cooking was all about, so she could comprehend. Xian appeared to be thinking about it. She assured me that she would talk to someone and listen to what they had to say from now on. Something along those lines occurred. After I rebuked Xian, I suddenly recalled something. Diablo was present as Xian was attempting to make black tea. Diablo said something to the effect that he feared his body was going to be destroyed just by tasting black tea. Xian was able to progress as a result of his sacrifices. Xian wouldn't notice what was wrong if she practiced alone. We couldn't overlook the error any longer. Xian has always strived to get outcomes by depending only on her abilities. It was difficult to enhance oneself in this manner. Xian needed a chaperone, therefore we needed someone to step in. As a result, I couldn't possibly appoint Xian as a counselor. If she causes a squabble at the council, it may jeopardize the good connection we've recently formed with mankind. If Xian went on a rampage, the only individuals who could stop her were those who lived in our nation. If someone like that existed, someone who could restrict Xian, Having that person as a counselor would be significantly more effective. Take Diablo, for example. I murmured, I believe Diablo would do well 
expressing my actual emotions. When it happened, all of the execs nodded. Well, if it's Diablo Dono, then I'm relieved. I'm confident he could persuade those lords to do whatever we desire. And he wouldn't be bribed or blackmailed. Rigard, Benameru, and Gabal all spoke up, and it was evident that they had complete faith in Diablo. Shuna and Xian both agreed. With his intellect and ingenuity, I believe we'd be able to move things forward in the direction Ramuru sama desires. Even if I'm furious, second secretary, Diablo, is fantastic. And if that invader travels to the kingdom of Ingratia, I, the first secretary, will become even more important. There isn't likely anybody better qualified for the position. Everyone appeared to agree that Diablo should be appointed as our counselor. Sean seemed to have a hidden agenda, but there was little question that she was aware of Diablo's abilities. There were no counter-arguments. We came to the conclusion that Diablo was the best contender in this circumstance because there were no other viable options. However, he was not going to enjoy it. Keep in mind, though, that Diablo started to look for subordinates because he didn't appreciate having random tasks thrown at him. Perhaps he'll be able to spy and bring someone who is skilled in the type of negotiation we require. So far, Diablo has shown to be the most trustworthy choice, but keep in mind that anything may happen. Our meeting has been rescheduled. No, attending the council would have to be my responsibility until someone was chosen. I needed to make a decision on a replacement as quickly as possible, so I hope Diablo would return shortly. And that's it. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe. See you on my next video.